Quick, we need to call 911. I was shaken up and trembling, but I thought I had to help my husband, who had just collapsed. I grabbed my cell phone. Trying to reassure my daughter, I said, it's going to be okay. But she calmly said, It's fine. We don't need an ambulance. When I asked her why, I discovered an astonishing truth. My name is Karen. I'm 34, currently working part-time only in the morning at a call center. I reconnected with my husband, Mike, at a high school reunion and we immediately hit it off. Soon after, we started dating. Three years later, we got married, and now we have a first grade daughter, Emily. When Emily was born, Mike felt a stronger need to support our family, leading to more overtime at work. Even after he worked long hours, he always made time for Emily and me. I never worried about our schedules as I felt so cherished. Mike is a pharmacist. Whenever I caught a cold, he would rush home to take care of me. I know the human body really well, so tell me where it hurts. I'll get you the right cold medicine and give you a massage. He would say gently, nursing me back to health. Emily would get sad whenever I was sick. Mom, get well soon, so you can be back to your cheerful self. I wanted to get better quickly for her. Seeing my discomfort, Emily would turn to Mike and say, Dad, give Mom the usual magic medicine. Mike saying, sure thing, and handed me a combination of herbal remedies and cold medicine. In our home, we call it magic medicine. Emily bravely takes her bitter medicine because of this. And I having often been sick since I was young, always feel better the next day, believing in the magic of the medicine. For you, Emily, mommy will take the magic medicine and get well. I said, taking the bitter medicine to boost her spirits. By the next day, I was completely better Mommy got better thanks to you, Emily. Thank you. No, it was the magic medicine. She replied with a smile, heading off to school. You seem to be all better now. I'm off to work then. Rest up today. He left for work showing his concern. Today, I was excited to make a slightly fancy dinner as a thank you to the two of them, for their concern. I worked so hard on the preparation, it almost seemed like it was someone's birthday. Emily was thrilled, when she came home after lunch. It smells so delicious. I was talking about it with my friends on the way home. You made it, Mom. I'm so excited for tonight. She was buzzing with excitement as she quickly finished her homework. Seeing her happy smile made all the effort worth it. As evening approached, and I thought Mike would be coming home soon, I started setting the table. Emily was helping me arrange the glasses, when Mike called. Sorry, I thought I'd be home early today, but my coworker needs advice. I want to take him out for dinner. So you don't have to worry about me tonight. I'm really sorry. Mike said one-sidedly, not giving me a chance to say anything before hanging up. I thought it must be important, and resigning myself to the situation, put down my phone and told Emily, Daddy has something important to discuss with someone from work, so he doesn't need dinner. It's a shame. But how about we, just the two of us? I said. Emily was visibly disappointed. What? Daddy's not eating. But you worked so hard, Mom. She suppressed her own sadness, showing concern for me. 
I felt my heart warm, realizing how caring she had grown. The meal I had prepared for the three of us was disrupted, but Emily's kindness made the disappointment fade away. As long as you eat, mommy is happy. Then, I'll eat daddy's share too. She said, smiling and eagerly eating her meal. After we finished and cleaned up together, we enjoyed dessert and had a relaxing evening. I thought daddy could have joined us for dessert, but he didn't come home. Yes, I'm worried about daddy too. But let's get ready for bed. I suggested. Emily and I waited for Mike's return, but as he didn't come back, we eventually went to sleep. That night, Mike didn't come home. It was around 5 a.m. when he finally arrived. Try not to wake us, he quietly opened the front door. I was up preparing lunch and breakfast, so I noticed and went to the entrance. Seeing me, Mike immediately apologized. I missed the last train home because the talk went on so long, and I had to wait for the first train in the morning. I'm sorry for worrying you. Realizing how serious his discussion must have been, I refrained from complaining and said, You should take a bath first. I'll prepare your breakfast in the meantime. Yay. Thanks, I'll do that. Later, Emily woke up, and the three of us were able to have breakfast together. Emily excitedly told Mike all about last night's dinner. Daddy, why did you have to be away for such an important dinner? Mom made a really fancy meal yesterday. Really? I'm sorry, Karen. I promise I'll be home early today. He promised me, and we all left the house together. I couldn't make another luxurious meal, but I planned to make Emily's favorite omelet and headed to the supermarket after work. At the supermarket, I ran into Emily's friend's mom. Oh, Emily's mom, long time no see. How have you been? Jake's mom, what a coincidence to see you. I've been feeling a bit under the weather lately. Maybe it's just my age. I said, and we chatted. Then she made a suggestion. Hey, why don't you let Emily stay over at our place next time? That way, Karen, you can have some time to yourself to relax. Jake likes Emily, so he'd be thrilled to have her over. Really? I might just take you up on that offer. I replied, and we agreed on a date before parting ways. When I got home and Emily returned, I told her about the encounter. Hey, guess what? Today, I ran into Jake's mom. She invited you to have a sleepover at her house. Hearing this, Emily's face lit up with excitement. What? Jake's house? Can I really go? Of course you can. Just be sure to behave yourself. Jake's mom said you can come over this Saturday. Emily eagerly started preparing for the sleepover. As did Jake, apparently. I silently thanked Jake's mom for her thoughtful suggestion. That evening, Mike came home early. Emily happily ran to the door to greet him. Daddy, guess what? I'm going to sleep over at Jake's house. She excitedly reported to Mike. I explained to Mike how it was her idea, out of concern for my health, and he responded. Then, I'll make plans for Saturday to go out for lunch, do some shopping, and enjoy yourself. I'll pick up Emily from Jake's house on Sunday. Really? Then I'll do just that. I agreed, grateful for the opportunity. After dinner, Mike suddenly remembered something and pulled an envelope from his bag. Daddy, 
What's that? Emily asked curiously. Mike proudly handed it to me. This is for you, Karen. I bought these special ingredients to help you get stronger since you've been unwell. Emily was delighted. Mom, you do get sick often. This magic food will make you stronger. That's great. You bought this just for me. It must have been expensive. But thank you. He bought all these ingredients for me. That made me feel both apologetic and grateful. Your well-being is what matters most. These will work wonders if you eat them every day. Mike reassured me with a smile. However, he then clasped his hands together, apologized, and said, There's one more thing. I'm really sorry. But work will be hectic from tomorrow until Friday. I might come home late. Mike deeply apologized, resting his forehead on the table. Emily looked upset. And I felt disappointed too. But knowing he was working hard for us, I couldn't say anything. I held back my sadness and comforted Emily. Emily, Daddy is working hard for us. Let's plan to go to the amusement park on his next day off. I promised, managing to cheer her up. Mike gave me a thankful look and decided it was time to sleep. I ate the special ingredients Mike had bought before going to bed. They were unlike anything I had seen before. They were black in color and seemed dry, but tasted like fruit and were easy to eat. However, I woke up at 2 a.m. with a headache and an upset stomach, rushing to the bathroom. Emily and Mike showed no signs of illness, so I knew it wasn't the dinner. What else did I eat that they didn't? I wondered. Then I remembered the food Mike had given me. Not knowing its effects, I assumed that must be the cause. Despite feeling unwell, I eventually managed to sleep. The next morning, Mike had already left, leaving a note on the table. Note said, Thanks for the lunch. Call me if you need anything. I'm off to work. I debated whether to tell Mike about the adverse reaction to his gift, but decided not to bother him at work and planned to email him later. For the time being, I chose to stop eating the special ingredient. A few minutes later, Emily woke up and, over breakfast, excitedly planned what she would do at her sleepover with Jake. We got ready and left the house together. Will we not see Daddy for a while? Maybe. He'll be home when you're asleep and leave for work before you wake up. You could leave him a note if anything comes up. Emily agreed, and we chatted about trivial things as usual on our way to work and school. When I arrived at the office and was getting ready for the day, I received an email from Mike. Don't forget to eat it today. It's important to continue daily, he had written. I replied, asking, what effects does it have? His response came in the evening. That said, that ingredient is full of various nutrients and has no harmful effects, so don't worry. I thought maybe my body, being weaker than others, had a rejection reaction. Even though Mike's email assured me that it shouldn't cause any health issues, Remembering yesterday's headache and stomach pain made me hesitant to eat it again. Feeling guilty about throwing it away, I decided to put the ingredient in Mike's daily lunch, hoping it would keep him healthy. This way, Mike could benefit from it, and I wouldn't have to discard it. I planned to buy supplements and healthy food that suited me better. A few days passed and Mike didn't complain of any health issues 
confirming that it was just me who couldn't tolerate the ingredient. Finally, the long-awaited Saturday arrived. Emily went off happily in Jake's mom's car for the sleepover. Mike left early in the morning for a hot spring trip, allowing me to have a relaxing day. I occasionally received emails from Jake's mom with updates and photos. Emily was beaming, baking sweets with Jake. I enjoyed my day, going shopping, and having dinner out. Sunday came quickly. Mike messaged me. I'm taking Emily to see a movie, released today, before coming home. Feeling a bit guilty for having the day to myself. I appreciated Mike's kindness. In the evening, when Emily and Mike returned, Emily looked a bit sad. She's been like this all day. Probably sad about saying goodbye to Jake. Mike explained. I remembered feeling the same way as a child and empathized with her. It means you had a great time. Let's invite him over next time. I suggested, hoping to give Jake's mom a break as well. Emily nodded and helped me with dinner preparation. Mike excused himself to take a bath. As he left, Emily tugged at my sleeve. She was about to speak when a loud noise came from the bathroom. Rushing to the bathroom, I screamed in shock. Mike had collapsed. We need to call an ambulance. Now, despite trembling, I managed to pull out my phone from my pocket to make the call. Trying to reassure Emily, I said, it's going to be okay. But she calmly responded, no need for an ambulance. I was shocked by Emily's words. What are you talking about? Daddy did something bad, and he's being punished by God. I couldn't comprehend her reasoning at the moment. As I thought that saving a life was the priority, I convinced her to let me call an ambulance. Thankfully, Mike was safe because I called right away. Though he hadn't woken up yet. After arranging for his hospital care for the next day or two, I thanked the staff and left with Emily. When we got home, I asked Emily what she was trying to tell me earlier. Sorry, can you tell me what you were trying to say earlier? Emily then recounted her experiences during the sleepover and the movie. As I listened, my expression darkened. Here's what Emily said. Recently, before bedtime, I've seen Emily's dad walking in front of our house. Jake seemed to have said during their sleepover. But Emily was puzzled. Really? But isn't that around 9 p.m.? Daddy usually works much later. It must be someone else. No, it's true. Let's check tonight. So, Emily stayed up late, watching the window with Jake. A few minutes later, Jake left to use the bathroom. While Emily was watching out the window, just as Jake had said, it seemed like Mike walked past their house. But he wasn't alone. There was a woman walking with him. They appeared to be arm in arm, looking quite friendly. Emily was shocked to see it wasn't her mom with him. She didn't say anything to Jake and pretended that nobody had passed by, choosing instead to go to bed. On Sunday, when Mike came to pick her up, Emily, still affected by the previous night, wasn't very smiley. Mike probably thought a movie might cheer her up, so he took her to a theater. When Mike bought movie tickets, he mentioned, I accidentally got an extra one for mom. Emily, with a small laugh, said, Silly dad. But during the movie, Emily noticed Mike was distracted, whispering to someone, Hey, 
My daughter is right here. Oh, it's fine. She'll be my stepdaughter soon, right? Hey, Emily, you must be happy. I'm prettier than your mom, right? Emily was startled to be addressed by a woman she didn't know. Mike told the woman, stop talking like that. However, it seemed Mike continued to be intimate with the woman during the movie. Emily realized the extra ticket was a lie. She returned home, not making much eye contact with Mike, her lack of smiles due to this discovery. I was shocked to hear this, as Mike had never shown any suspicious behavior. It was hard to believe Emily's story, but she wasn't a child to fabricate lies. While I was reflecting on the situation, Mike's phone rang. Mike's phone was left on the desk when he was taken to the hospital. It had received multiple notifications. Curiosity got the better of me, and I peeked at the messages. They were from a woman. The content was about enjoying the movie the day before, and asking about the progress of a plan to get rid of me. I was horrified. Emily's claims were true. It turned out that Mike had been secretly planning to drive me out. I desperately recalled his recent actions, but there were no hints of such a scheme. So I guessed it hadn't been put into action yet. Then, I received a call from the hospital. They wanted me to come because they had diagnosed Mike's illness. When I arrived with Emily, the doctor talked to me. The cause was an overdose of a certain food. Mike, usually very healthy, had been eating something that caused headaches, nausea, and dizziness. The doctor explained. The doctor's words connected all the dots for me. Mike and this woman had been plotting to worsen my health by making me eat harmful food daily. They were planning to live together while I was hospitalized. Mike's recent, over time, was a lie to see her. I grew increasingly angry as I pieced together Mike's actions and words into their plan. When the nurse informed me that Mike was awake and could speak, I composed myself and decided to visit his room. Fortunately, my parents' house was only a 20-minute drive from the hospital, so I dropped Emily off there first. Emily, I need to have an important talk with Dad. Please stay here and be good. Okay. Emily said nothing, remaining quietly composed, as if she understood the situation. I felt sorry for burdening my young daughter with these concerns. When I thought of her feelings, I felt sorry for her, and my irritation with Mike, who dared to cheat so blatantly, grew. Approaching Mike's hospital room, I took a deep breath before entering. However, I heard voices from inside the room. Peeking through the glass part of the door, I saw an unfamiliar woman. I cracked the door slightly to listen, without being noticed. Hey, Mike, you have collapsed, and your wife still hasn't come to care for you. That's terrible, isn't it? Unbelievable. Such a horrible woman. You should divorce her right away. I know. And yet, that woman, she's still not falling ill. Is she? Hearing this, I realized it was indeed this woman's doing. Unable to stay silent any longer, I knocked loudly on the door. Startled, Mike and the woman quickly turned toward the door. Am I interrupting? I asked, watching as they both visibly paled. The woman stood up, flustered. Oh, you're his wife. I'm Mike's co-worker. I just came to visit him because I was worried. Well, I'll be leaving now, she said, 
hastily trying to escape. But I blocked the door, determined not to let her go. You've come all this way. Why don't you stay a little longer? I said to her with a smile. She looked unsettled, her eyes darting around, seemingly betting that his secret was still safe. Mike pretended ignorance. Oh, ah, uh, yay. Why don't you stay a bit longer, Johnson? He said, his face sweating and his tone of voice off. There was an odd tension among the three of us. The woman flinched at my slightest movement. Having left Emily with my mom, I didn't want to waste more time. So, I cut straight to the chase. So, you're having an affair with her, huh? Mike's eyes widened in surprise, and he immediately denied it. No, what are you talking about? She's just a co-worker. Really? Going to the movies with just a co-worker and your daughter making jokes about her being the next wife? I asked with a hint of sarcasm. Both were at a loss for words. Looking down, seemingly they were admitting defeat, but I wasn't ready to forgive yet. Oh, by the way, the food you gave me didn't suit my constitution. So I've been putting it in your lunch. Hearing this, Mike, who had been subdued until then, suddenly regained his energy and glared at me, shouting loudly. Hey, what have you done? Is that why I'm unconscious now? What? Was it dangerous food? You told me it was something to make me feel better? I put it in your lunch because I wanted you to be energetic. Ah, that's... It's a pity your plan to make me unconscious fell through, isn't it? Never thought it would end up in your own lunch. Did you? I taunted him. Mike was completely at a loss for words. He was overwhelmed by his own scheme. Then, I turned to the woman and said sternly, so, you're the one who's been making advances on a married man. Remember, you're also at fault here. Expect a hefty alimony bill. The woman immediately retaliated. Why should I pay? Mike was the one who said he needed comfort and came onto me. I'm a victim too? Oh, really? So, you're saying it was all Mike's doing? Then... Would you mind showing me your email exchanges with him right now? As a victim, you wouldn't have been proactive, right? That's... The woman stammered. She was clearly taken aback, realizing her strategy was failing. She quickly changed tactics and knelt down, begging for forgiveness. I'm sorry. Please forgive me this time. Your apology won't change anything. Expect a letter from my lawyer at your house. I left the room without them, who were pale and on the verge of tears. Immediately, I headed to my parents' house, where I had left Emily. Welcome back. Emily has been very well behaved. Sorry for dropping in on you so suddenly. Also, I'm going to divorce Mike. Can we stay here for a while? I asked my mother in a whirlwind of emotion. She was initially shocked. But after hearing about the whole fiasco, she empathized with my situation. I had no idea all this was happening. Of course, you and Emily can stay here starting today. Your dad will pick up your things. She offered a sanctuary without probing further into the matter. Feeling the warmth of my mother's support brought tears to my eyes. I explained to Emily that we couldn't live with Mike anymore. She seemed to understand and said, I don't like daddy anymore because he was nice to someone who's not mommy. 
I want to live at Grandma's house. Emily, still a child, had sensed something was wrong with Mike's actions. Thank you, honey. From now on, I'll make sure you're always smiling. I promised Emily. When my father returned from work, he collected our necessary belongings from our house. The next day, Mike was discharged from the hospital. My father and I went to talk to Mike around the time he got home. Mike immediately began apologizing upon my arrival. I'm so sorry. I've realized that you and Emily are what matter most to me. I'll cut ties with that woman. Please forgive me. His late apology did nothing to change my feelings. There's no way I can restart a life with someone who tried to set me up. Can you sign the divorce papers? I said, sighing. My father, who had been silent till then, spoke up. Listen, Mike. I can't let my precious daughter live with someone like you. If you really care about Karen and Emily, you'll divorce her. Under the pressure of my father's stern words, Mike tearfully signed the divorce papers. And don't think this is the end. We'll be filing for damages from you and that woman. Just signing the divorce papers isn't enough. I left the house with a sense of superiority, having told them off. Afterwards, I was able to demand a substantial amount of alimony from both the woman and Mike. Since they worked at the same company, bad rumors about them quickly spread. The woman couldn't stand the gossip and soon left the company. She also ended up in debt due to the alimony, leading to a financially strained life. Mike, too, faced rumors among our neighborhood and at his workplace, losing any chance of promotion. Currently, everyone seems to be keeping their distance from both of them. I switched from part-time to full-time work, working hard for Emily's sake. My efforts were recognized, and I received a raise, allowing us to live a more fulfilling life. For me, Emily's happiness is more important than my own life. With this in mind, I've decided to protect her life so that she can spend every day with a smile.